Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless there is a coming world dictator known as the antichrist who is foretold of in the bible who in the near future will control a worldwide government a worldwide monetary system and a worldwide religion he will use surveillance technology to control the peoples of the world is he living now probably is the Antichrist already working behind the scenes to bring about his plan for world economic and political domination? It seems so. From all indications, the Antichrist satanic technology-based system is already being set in place. He will use technology to achieve and enforce his near total control of the world and its people, and they don't even see it coming. The United States Federal Reserve is considering the creation of a digital dollar. Cyber currencies have many supporters, yet critics warn they would be a privacy nightmare. One currency expert claims the removal of cash would push America closer to a totalitarian state. Dale Hurd has the story. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell told the House Financial Services Committee in March that the Fed had already begun testing a digital dollar. So what we're doing is experimenting in kind of early stage experimentation. How would this work? Does it work? What's the best technology? What's the most efficient? Just like paper dollars, a central bank digital currency, or CBDC, would be issued by the Federal Reserve. Those pushing for it say it would have several advantages over physical money. They say it could be used to fight inflation because the Fed would have more direct control over the money supply. It could speed up transaction payments and help fight money laundering. The ability to track transactions has a couple of uh, elements that are very attractive to uh, economic policymakers. One is to know where people are spending their money. Another is to track taxes and prevent evasion and that sort of thing. Backers say the U.S. needs a digital dollar if it wants to remain the world's reserve currency. Opponents warn that it could be a very effective instrument of government control. Make no mistake about it, central bank digital currency is not a monetary system. It is a social credit system in which the governments of the world will tell you how you can spend your money. We can see that Christians will be persecuted using this system as they will try and force believers in Jesus Christ to adhere to their evil ways. When Christians say no, they will turn off your CBDC account. I hope you see how the mark of the beast comes into play, as Christians will not be able to buy or sell. Physical money has been called one of the last bastions of privacy. Laws like the Bank Secrecy Act have already stripped away most of the privacy from bank accounts and financial transactions. Banks have really a ton of power that people don't realize to shut down accounts, to freeze accounts, and to end up holding them for really any number of reasons. Currency expert James Rickard says a digital currency would move America closer to a totalitarian state. If I buy anything, the government doesn't know it. MasterCard kind of knows it, but even MasterCard uses product codes so they don't say, you know, Jim bought a Snickers. It says Jim bought miscellaneous merchandise at a retail place. So the government doesn't know what you're doing. But with this new central bank digital currency, they will, because they maintain the ledger. So if I buy, you know, Ron DeSantis' new book, or I go to a Donald Trump rally, or whatever it may be, the government, using artificial intelligence and having that information, which they would, are able to profile you. They say, well, this guy kind of looks like a conservative, and maybe he's MAGA. And then you've got a target on your back. Last year, a Canadian court froze millions of dollars raised for truckers blocking roads to protest COVID-19 vaccine mandates. When the Pakistani government was faced with almost non-stop protests last year, it threatened to switch off the bank accounts of the protesters. A digital dollar could not only be switched off, 
The Fed would be able to force negative interest rates on Americans if it wanted them to spend more, penalizing savers. Digital cash might also be an easy target for hackers. On the bank-to-bank -bank level, a real-time payment system called FedNow is expected to begin in July. It's not a digital currency, but an upgrade to what some call our antiquated banking system. FedNow Service is an instant payments infrastructure that financial institutions can use to clear and settle payments instantly. Large bank deposits will be expected to clear much faster than they do now. But when it comes to a digital dollar, Fed Chairman Powell has admitted he's not at all confident that Americans want it. Well, this ought to send a chill down your spine when you read in the book of Revelation that there will come a day where you can't buy or sell. The digital currency actually enables that. If they're physical currency, whether that's coins or paper money, uh, you get to have that and you get to have physical possession of it. And so you can go to a marketplace and you can buy. You can also take your products to a marketplace and sell them and get cash. And the government's not involved in that transaction at all. They don't even know it's happening. But in a digital currency, they will know exactly what you're buying and how much you're paying for it and who you bought it from. Now you have absolute control that they could shut off your digital currency. And in that shut off, you don't get to buy and you don't get to sell. I hope you see where this is all going. Society is fast moving toward the mark of the beast. This is the future the Bible has been warning about. We have arrived. Scripture reveals that the Antichrist will unite the world under one religion, one government, and one united economy. Every person will be required to take a mark in order to buy or sell goods of any kind, but it has even more sinister potential. It is a perfect weapon in the arsenal of a tyrant bent on world domination. As we know from the Bible, a tyrannical ruler will govern the entire world during the last half of the tribulation period, and he will likely use technology to accomplish his purposes as we read in Revelation 13, 16 through 18, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Technological advances are paving the way for fulfillment of end time prophecy. These innovations are creating the environment that the Antichrist and false prophet will need to wire this world together for their evil purposes. Even now, it is well within the range of possibility for a centralized power to gain worldwide control of all banking and purchasing. In our time, the time of the end, we are witnessing the technology that will bring about the end of days climaxing in the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible gives us the most dire warning to those who take the mark of the beast and worship his image in Revelation 14, 9 through 11. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast in his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. The first of God's bold judgments is aimed specifically at those who take the mark of the beast and worship his image, as we read in Revelation 16, 1 and 2. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth. And a foul and loathsome sword came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. 1 John 2.18 Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. With tribulation era prophecy taking shape all around us, if you have never called on the name of the Lord, I implore you to do so today, as we can anticipate the Lord's return is not far off. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, 
The pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Help from above as rescuers lift a pregnant woman to safety. Just one of countless moments of danger and acts of heroism playing out in Italy's flooded Emilia-Romagna region. On the ground, emergency workers search for more people who may be trapped. Locals say they've never seen a disaster on this scale. I've lived here since 1979. I've seen floods go by, but I've never seen anything like that. We've never had water here. Cars lie abandoned in flooded streets. Rivers burst their banks after half a year's worth of rain fell in just 36 hours. A state of emergency is in effect. More than 10,000 people have had to leave their homes. Where the water has receded, Residents are taking stock of the damage. Volunteers are helping get the most vulnerable to safety, in case the waters should rise again. We've come to give a hand to try to save people and animals. The situation is still tough, tragic. We hope it will improve. I don't know what the weather forecast is. It's a race against time to bring people to safety. The risk of drowning or being swept away is very real. People here have never seen a disaster on this scale. I was expecting the river to rise after the red alert warning, but instead of breaking through in two or three places, it completely burst its banks and the water came with no warning. 23 rivers have overflown so far, flooding more than 40 municipalities and hundreds of roads. More than 10,000 people have had to leave their homes. Those who stayed behind are picking up the pieces. You see, we need to do everything from the beginning again. The books, all the documents, all the clothes, they're all gone. They say we have to get out, we have to leave this house. It's the second time this month that people have died as a result of extreme weather in Emilia-Romagna. Sunday's Formula One Grand Prix has been cancelled. Organizers say they couldn't guarantee the safety of attendees. It's the second time this month that people have died as a result of extreme weather in Emilia-Romagna. Meteorologists say climate change could make them more frequent. Disasters of today becoming tomorrow's facts of life. Jesus declares this in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus tells us in verse 37, when our days parallel the days of Noah, he is returning. One of the things that parallel our days with the days of Noah is the unprecedented flooding the world has been experiencing over the last few years. Jesus goes on to tell us in verses 38 and 39 that when he returns, things will be going on as normal, as people will be eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. Just as in the days of Noah, when people were caught off guard and the flood came, so also will people of our time be caught off guard when Jesus returns. Turn now to the war in Ukraine tonight and the stunning images coming in this evening in this ferocious battle for Bakhmut. What the new drone video shows with Ukrainian fighters in the trenches pushing back Russian forces. Tonight's shocking drone video showing the ferocity of fighting inside Bakhmut. The Ukrainian military saying it shows Russian artillery pummeling buildings again and again. But Ukrainian forces hanging on to Bakhmut's western districts and claiming small advances in the west and to the north and south of the city. The Ukrainians saying this new video shows another successful operation near Bakhmut just days ago. Artillery striking enemy positions. Russian troops crawling from their bunker with hands up. Our team witnessing the costs of this brutal conflict badly wounded Ukrainian soldiers at this military field hospital near the fighting. Well, two wounded soldiers have just been brought in. Their position was hit by Russian artillery. One of the soldiers here has a serious shrapnel wound to his leg. The other soldier also injured by shrapnel. 
and volunteers like Oleg expecting many more casualties when Ukraine's major counter-offensive begins. When you have assault operations, you have all, always much more injured people. But what can we do? We need to defend our country. Matthew 24, 6 and 7. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Nation is the Greek word ethnos, which means a race, as of the same habit, i.e. a tribe, especially a foreign, non-Jewish one, Gentiles, usually by implication, pagan. What I believe Jesus is saying here is that there have always been wars and rumors of wars. But when you see the same ethnic group fighting the same ethnic group, now pay attention. His return is near. More heavy artillery enters Sudan's capital Khartoum, brought in by the army to use in battles against the paramilitary rapid support forces. The battle for control of Sudan shows no sign of ending. Both the army and the rapid support forces have claimed control of strategic sites in Khartoum this week and both insist they have the upper hand. As strikes continue in Khartoum, along with heavy artillery fire in residential areas, street battles have also occurred in many parts of the capital, destroying homes and properties. For Sudanese, more stalled negotiations mean more uncertainty and more suffering. People are leaving Khartoum because there's no food, no water, no electricity, and there is very high levels of insecurity. WFP is providing hot meals, WFP will continue to support refugees as and when they arrive, but the future is very bleak for those people, it is bleak for Sudan, and it is bleak for the region. More than a month into the conflict, the UN says one million people have been displaced. They can't go home until the two sides agree to stop fighting. Luke 21:25, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. The best way to understand how bad the conflict is in Sudan is perhaps to hear directly from refugees. Many people have lost their lives. Today, al Janaina has been transformed into hell. I want the United Nations to intervene. We don't live like people. We're not eating properly. We don't have health services. We can't bear any more of this. Mustafa, a teacher, says his country is no longer a functioning state. At the Borata displacement camp in Chad, one after another refugee gives accounts of running away from large groups of armed men who roam the countryside terrorizing civilians. Most here are women and children particularly vulnerable to kidnapping and sexual violence. The war is really bad. A child still being breastfed can be killed alongside his mother. His father can be killed. There is nothing good about war. Witness to death, they arrive traumatized, especially the youngest. It's being called a humanitarian catastrophe. As Myanmar's Rakhine state reels from the devastating cyclone Mocha, residents search for food and water. In the capital of the region, water purification plants are shut down as a consequence of the storm, leaving the city of some 150,000 people without a supply of drinkable water. While some can afford to purchase the precious resource for a high price, those from poorer communities are left to rely on aid. I've been queuing for 30 minutes. This is my place and many people are in front of me. I just wanted to get two water tanks. I think this is the only place in Sitwe that is giving water. Same scenario in this monastery where the United Nations World Food Programme has set up temporary accommodation. Here, people are rushing to receive bags of rice. I haven't eaten for four days. I don't have bowls, plates or a home. I don't even have clothes to change. I'm here to ask for rice as my family is starving. However, Cyclone Mocha has cut off certain areas in Myanmar from the world, making aid access difficult. The United Nations say negotiations with Myanmar's military junta for access to cyclone-affected areas are still ongoing.
The memory of Cyclone Nargis in 2008 remains ever-present. The then junta was accused of blocking emergency aid and initially refusing to grant access to humanitarian workers and supplies. Uh, and it's now estimated uh, that at least three million people are going to need uh, humanitarian uh, aid, uh, emergency humanitarian aid, as a direct result of the cyclone. But the humanitarian response capacity is limited because of severe uh, underfunding. This underfunding could affect the Rohingya exiles in particular. Rakhine State is home to around 600,000 Rohingya, with several hundred thousand members of this ethnic group living in the areas affected by the cyclone between Myanmar and neighboring Bangladesh. More shelters at a camp for displaced people in North Kivu province are under construction to ease a crowded area near the provincial capital, Goma. Most of these people have fled from fighting between the armed group M23 and the National Army. Nearly one million Congolese here ran away from their homes during the last year. We fled from my village six months ago. There was too much fighting. People were dying. So we came to this camp. Life is very hard. We don't have basic necessities. The United Nations says the humanitarian crisis in Democratic Republic of Congo is one of the most neglected in the world. Thousands of people are living rough in camps like this one. They are fleeing from conflict. They say they don't want to go back home because the situation there is too dangerous. Armed groups in the East and other areas have killed thousands and displaced many more in recent years. Aid agencies and the government are also dealing with diseases and natural disasters compounded by climate change effects. Uh, the numbers in the DRC are staggering because of the size of the country, uh, the, the, the size of the population. And so it has the highest number of food insecure people in the world. One Congolese out of four is food insecure. Uh, and it has the highest of, uh, of uh, internally displaced people in Africa. Uh, a third number, it has over six million people uh, severely uh, malnourished, mostly children under five, and this number has not moved for many, many years. A landslide recently swept away villages in South Kivu province. It was one of the worst disasters in recent history. 400 people died, up to 5,000 are missing. Esther Solomon Shans barely made it out alive. She and her husband are now trying to get by. It was raining heavily. We started to take the children to safety. I have five children and another on the way. I'm building temporary shelter until I figure out what to do. They join more than 6 million internally displaced Congolese who are also trying to do what they can to survive. You know, it's not something we're used to around here, especially on the East Coast, but residents in parts of New Jersey and Westchester were woken up last night thanks to a small earthquake. Basically, when it comes to earthquake, 2.2 on the Richter scale is very low. But for people in New York, you know, the Empire State is known for a lot of things. It's not known for earthquakes. That is certainly not one thing on the list. Just a few hours ago, though, a lot of people were in panic trying to figure out the source of a large rumble. Later again, confirmed to be that 2.2 magnitude earthquake. Word quickly spread on social media. That's what I was saying before. People tried to confirm what had happened and see if perhaps if anybody else felt it too. One person writing, anyone know what that huge explosion was? Shook the whole neighborhood in Yonkers. Another said the small quake sounded like a bomb had gone off. Now news of this Tembler comes just a few months after the Buffalo area recorded its very own 3.8 magnitude earthquake. Yeah, new tonight, a massive magnitude 7.7 .7 earthquake has hit in the Pacific off the coast of Australia. Want to get to ABC 7 News meteorologist Sandy Patel with more on that. This was a major earthquake striking just before 8 p.m. in the Pacific, southeast of the Loyalty Islands. So if you take a look at the graphics here, you will notice it's a magnitude 7.7 .7 with a depth of 24 miles just east of Australia in the Pacific Ocean, southeast of the Loyalty Islands. Fortunately, no tsunami 
tsunami warning was issued for Hawaii or West Coast here in the Bay Area and California, Washington, Oregon included dozens of reports of smaller aftershocks to that 7.7 earthquake. So when you look at the earthquake magnitudes, a 7 is a major earthquake. The only good thing is this is not over a densely populated area. It's sort of in the middle of an an island chain. So that obviously was the good thing about this earthquake. Luke 2111 and there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. There are five earthquakes that occur during the seven year tribulation, three of which are called great earthquakes. The largest and final earthquake to ever rattle planet earth takes place during the last half of the seven year tribulation as we read in Revelation 16, 17 through 20. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. Now the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon was remembered before God, to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Then every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. Turkey and Syria are still reeling from the devastating earthquakes that hit the two countries three months ago. 48 hours of tremors produced quakes of a magnitude of 7.8 and 7.6, killing at least 50,000 people in southern Turkey. Over 7,000 died in northwest Syria, a region already struggling desperately with ongoing civil war. This is an area that has, you know, been uh, under conflict for over a decade now. And I think what's really key to remember is that it's almost impossible to separate the needs which existed in northwest Syria before the earthquake from really after the earthquake. Even before the earthquake, at least 4.1 million people in northwest Syria, which is around 90 percent of the population, were reliant on humanitarian aid to meet their most basic needs. You know, this is also an area that has a huge population of internally displaced persons, many of whom are living with uh, very real physical and mental scars of over a decade of conflict and who have been displaced multiple times already, even before this earthquake. Back in Turkey, over 100,000 buildings crumbled. According to a UN report, around 3 million Turks were relocated. Luke 21, 26 through 28. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. The signs of Jesus soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he 
when he makes his personal appearance. My God! What if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.